Well, have you ever been asked how to describe God? Very challenging for many. You think, wait a minute, how would I describe God? Now, down through time, there's been all kinds of pictures or concepts of God created for us. That image of someone in a white robe sitting on a throne with a long white beard, certainly speaking English or communicating in that in our imagery. We try to describe God to our little children, to Sunday school students, or even to our beloved friends and family. We try to describe it only to find that we fall short in so many ways. Of really explaining this is who and what is. Billy Graham was asked if he could just put it together in one simple sentence. Describe for us simply what God is. And Billy Graham said, well, I don't want to shy away from this, but I'm going to tell you, it's a very difficult thing to do. In some ways, it's not possible, of course, to put everything of God into one sentence. It's very difficult, very challenging, he said. But God is infinite and will never fully understand God's greatness, not on this side of eternity. How interesting it is that we decide we have something so powerful within our lives, but it's so difficult to sort of box it in and framework it to be able to say this I know is what God is. Oh, but here is we find from Psalm 145 verse 3, God Greatness is unsearchable, unlimited, boundless, infinite. And so the challenge we have is it would be very difficult to put it in some sort of framework or box because it's unlimited, it's boundless. And we're encouraged never to box God in, never to try to create some sort of image or idea of what God is. For even the Ten Commandments are inviting us to this journey of not making a graven image, not picturing anything in mind. Graven image we often think of as carving maybe some sort of an idol or painting a picture. But when we do it in mind, we do just the same injustice to the divine presence. When we try to picture God, when we try to say this is what God looks like, or project some sort of image of God in a physical context. All that God is, is with boundless, uh, unlimited possibilities, boundaries or no limits, none, no boundaries whatsoever. For every attribute of God, goodness, righteousness, grace, graciousness, mercy, patience, love, faithfulness, kindness, and so much more are all infinite. And they are beyond measure. Every one of God's ways. We'll never fully grasp or fully understand because, again, we can't emphasize enough that what God is, is unlimited. What God is, is boundless. What God is, is infinite. So how silly for us to think of God being in one location or in some physical presence or being or being locked in or confined to or limited by some place up in space we may call heaven. God is everywhere. There's not a spot where God is not. Simply that catchphrase describes exactly this open idea of describing God as being this infinite, boundless, and unlimited uh, essence within our lives. Unlimited? People say, well, maybe, maybe we could describe God in this way. Uh, for Tozer points out how we can talk about unlimited wealth. But wait a minute. We talk about unlimited wealth, and we use the word unlimited there, but can we not count wealth? And would there not be an end to counting wealth? So is the word unlimited used well in that context when we say unlimited wealth? Well, maybe we're not doing it really using the word properly then when it comes to God. Boundless. We might talk about boundless energy. And that, but you can measure a person's energy, and even energetic people have limits. So maybe boundless energy isn't the word boundless. Maybe we struggle with. Do we understand that? Because every time we try to define words and attributes that we associate with God, we kind of put some limitations on them. How about the word infinite? We might say that an artist takes infinite pains with their artwork, but really, when they're finished, they're done. So is it infinite? Is it ongoing? You see, maybe these words we are really misusing in some ways. Unlimited, boundless, uh, infinite. Because these words describe God. They don't describe anything but God, really. 
boundless. How can we describe that word in a physical term? But that's what God is. Infinite. How can we describe that in a physical way? But that's what God is. Boundless, infinite, and so uh, powerful in so many ways, unlimited. You see, this gives us the challenge we have in trying to describe God. But oh, we begin to draw nearer and nearer. I'm so happy that we have some great insights offered to us through the guidance of ancient scripture. So never fear. Here's some tips on helping us understand how we might describe God. Know God in a deeper sense. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. You saw it so beautifully on your screen, the words projected, but you also heard it being played by Scott Dunn on the keyboard. The beautiful music that we take so for granted so often is a powerful teaching tool that helps us understand a concept of God. Our Father, which art in heaven, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Really, here it gives us great insight into describing God. Hallowed be thy name. Holy, sacred, divine is the name. For the name really says it is the character or the nature of. So the first clue in describing God, we would have to say God's nature and character is holy, divine. It is sacred. It really means uh, in the word hallowed, that it is wholeness and purity and perfection. So we might say God is perfection. If we're going to strive God, God in us, God through us, God around us, God always for us in perfection. God revealing perfection, showing us perfection, and enabling us to live out our perfection. Be ye perfect, scripture says. Be per and people say, wait a minute, how can we be perfect? Ah, by acknowledging and recognizing this is what God is. Perfection. Perfection. So when I awaken to this, I'm awakening to really a greater understanding of God. For the scripture says the Holy One who inhabits eternity, whose name is perfect. Perfect. God is infinite perfection. Absolute bliss, indescribable beauty, boundless wisdom, absolute harmony. Wow, all these expressions helping us to describe and shape this beautiful essence that dwells within us. This power, this consciousness, this divine possibilities that are so infinite that flow in and through us. Here's the amazing thing though, as we understand that this perfection created us in the image of perfection. So we must begin to acknowledge ourselves as perfect. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to say that I'm perfect. That may seem very egotistical or that may be seem kind of arrogant. Oh, but what we're doing is acknowledging the very power and presence of the divine in us that is reflecting. We're reflecting constantly this beautiful perfection of God. When we begin to say, I am, I am being the very name of God. I am perfect. The God in me is perfect. And the God in me is expressing perfect mind, perfect body, perfect expression, perfect love, perfect forgiveness. It's all flowing in and through me. So as we're describing God, begins by the acknowledgement of this beautiful character and nature of perfection. Hallowed means holy, purity, perfection, so beautifully expressed. And to acknowledge God, to be one with God, to be in communion with God, we must simply begin by acknowledging our perfection and going there, not looking at all of our faults, because quite often we're stuck in saying, here are my list of limitations. I could write them all out. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm not this. I'm not that. And we go on and on. We list all the things that we may count as our things that we look in a world of not being perfect. But when we begin to acknowledge that the I am within me is this perfection, and we live from that mentality, I allow this fountain to spring forward from my life, a fountain of consciousness of the perfection, divine perfection in me, flowing through me from top to bottom. It is a healing work, healing emotions, healing mental outlooks, healing the physical body, healing and restoring the soul and aligning it 
with the divine presence. Now, you honor as holy, or you hallow the name when you recognize that there's really only one power, not two, one spiritual power in this world. So if we're going to describe God, it's this perfection. And this perfection is not divided in two with competing, competing powers. There is only one power. And that one power is the divine. That one power is God. All else is just simply the absence of that power. Just like there is darkness only in the absence of light. Outside of that, when there's light, where does darkness go? It disappears. It is not there. It doesn't go off to a corner. It doesn't go run away. It doesn't go to exist somewhere else. Darkness simply disappears when we shine the light. Darkness only exists in the absence of light. Light is all that there is, but when it is absent, when it is diminished, then darkness appears. So evil only exists in our error thinking. When we begin to think in error, not in perfect alignment, not righteous thinking, meaning right thinking, when we're thinking in error, what happens then is we invite them, giving power to that which not, is not our highest and best. We open the door to the darkness because we turn the light off and we finish it. So when we're constantly radiating the light of truth, radiating the light of love and grace and forgiveness, when we're radiating it all, darkness dissipates. Evil is no more. It has no power. It doesn't exist. So we hallow the name of God. We give honor to the name and the character. When we every day acknowledge there's just one power. Now in our world today, we're so accustomed to say, well, there's good and there's evil, and they're at battle with one another. There's always this challenge, is there not? We see every story where the author wants to include some sort of conflict going on to keep our interest. We love the sense of drama, and we want this drama to somehow keep us entertained. Oh, we like our drama, don't we? But how about we release all drama and know that in God, there is only the all good. And that is the one power. And the one power is all good. This wholeness also means a sense of oneness. So when we're understanding, hallowed be thy name, we honor the name by understanding that there's a oneness, that everything in this world is connected and is one with this divine power. Everything is meant to be in unity, is created in unity and created in this oneness. And this God dwells the very same in each and every person. Yet today, we love to separate our world, don't we? We love to label our world. We love to categorize. We like to put people in certain compartments. We like to make judgments about people that begin to separate. We begin it in normal conversations. Hi, what's your name? Oh, great. What do you do for a living? I want to compartmentalize you because we begin to pass judgments on what someone may do as a career. You see how often it is that we begin to create these ideas of separation and labels rather than a sense of us living in oneness and in unity with each other. We want to somehow treat people differently. Yet the God in us is the same God in the person next to you. And we're called to love our neighbor just as we love ourselves. So when we think about the world around us, how could we treat anyone differently than what we would like to treat ourselves or how we'd like to be treated? You know, here's our challenge. Quite often we uh, choose to treat others differently because we see the same thing differently. You know, I make the mistake all the time. I love to go book shopping and I'll see a title and I think, oh, I don't know if I have that book or not. I look at the cover and think, well, it's, I don't recognize that cover. I'm going to order the book only to find when it arrives. I already have the book only it has a different cover. You see, I was judging and purchasing by the cover rather than by the content on the inside. And so often we begin to separate and say, oh, it's different. You're different by the cover, by the outside, by the exterior, rather than realizing that hallowed be thy name means that the same God, the same character, the same divinity, the same nature that is within God is within each and every one of us. So we're describing God. We have to say God is unity. God is oneness. And God is in you. And God is in me. God in each and every one of us, just the same. Now, as you honor and holy the name of God, 
What you do is you mentally accept the fact that this power of being is only goodness, only truth, only beauty, only goodness. God is the all good. So if you're trying to describe God, we'd have to say it is the all good. Perfect, one, unity, all good. These are great attributes that help us begin to characterize and understand that nature, the nature of God that's also the nature within us. That we're each and every one of us is the all good. There's only goodness, only truth, only beauty, only love in God. Yet we find a world that's constantly preaching things like God is out to punish. God is out to make you suffer. God is out to make your life difficult. God has nothing else to do but go through the list of things to how to create more storms and turmoil and hurricanes and forest fires and on goes the list to punish certain groups, I would say. But God is the all good. God is love. And love is not about punishing. Love is not about the work of trying to create difficulties and challenges within people's lives. God can only bring good down through life. People have struggled with that. And they have to find their own awakening to this. There's a beautiful story of a soldier in the war who didn't believe in religion. And when he was called to fill out the form as to what's your religious background, he simply said, I'm a human being. I don't believe, I don't believe. Yet at the same time, as he uh, faced a tremendous illness, a challenge that helped him as a, he was wounded within the battles. He rested in the hospital and began to contemplate and say, wait a minute, what is my existence? How did I get here? Something created me. Something brought me about. And that good that brought me about, that intelligence, it must want me to exist. So it must want my good. And he began to contemplate this over and over again with his life. Why, if it created me, certainly wouldn't want to punish me because it created me out of love not to be tortured not to be punished but to be loved and to see nurture did me to be nurtured so it would not bring anything to me that was not my highest and best so he began to honor the name honor the character honor the nature of God within him that God is the all good the all good is at work within me. And he began to change his whole belief system about his understanding of the divine, of a presence of God within his life. And began to welcome the all good. It is flowing in me up and down and through my whole body. And he began to experience an amazing journey of healing in his life. Too often we begin to worry and fret uh, that we're not uh, hallowing the name and we're not really, uh, what we do, we worry and fret, we're not really aligning with all that is God. For refusing to let your attention be distracted from the objective goal is really what keeps us in this wholeness, keeps us in this level of perfection. And for this man in this story, he refused to let his attention be distracted by the wound, by his leg, by his injury. He simply just said, I believe in the all good flowing through me. For this is what God is, all good. All good caring for me, all good loving me, all good nurturing me, all good providing for me. So let's not worry, let's not fret. Let's just know that as we describe God, it's all good. When we love, when we feel this way, when we do this to the exclusion of anything else, and we don't allow anything else, this is how we make such great progress in our spiritual life. Because we are feeling and welcoming and living in the naturalness of the state desire, of that which we desire. He desired his healing. He desired his goodness. He desired his well-being. He desired his wholeness. And he knew that the nature of God is perfection. And so as he laid in that hospital bed, he began to dwell on that with no exception, not allowing any other thought, worry or fear, just the all good is flowing within me. Hallowed or holy is the name, is the very nature then of everything that you desire. That's right, meaning it's good. Everything that we desire within life has this wonderful power of goodness to be at work within us. For the very nature of God is yes. Do you ever understand that? That God is just one big yes. 
And people say, wait a minute. I think I've experienced a lot of no from God. And that no may be simply, yes, there's something better. It's still a yes. Because every no, every door that closes may just be opening up for you a new opportunity to see the, this or something better in your life unfold. How important it is that we awaken to that which is of the divine is ever responding in the positive, in the affirmative, yes. Even saying yes to those things that we may do in ignorance and the mistakes we make. When we begin to claim in negativity, this will never happen, I'll never be healed, I'll never, oh, the universe says, yes, if that's what you believe, it's never gonna happen, it'll never be healed. Well then here's your yes, because that's what you believe. As a man thinks, so he is. And it's according to our beliefs that we receive. So the yes is unfolding for us all the time. Be careful then that we just don't express a negative because the yes of God is responding to that negative with a, here it is. You asked for it. That's what you're going to get. Ah, so let us understand that the nature, the very character of the name of God is yes. Yes. There was a woman in Africa and she came to me and she said, I want to name my child a real sacred and holy name. Wonderful. Is it some biblical name? Oh yes, I'm going to name him Amen. Amen, because yes, that's what I want him to live out, this wonderful sacred truth of yes, 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 in all things, in all ways. I want to name my child Amen. I want him to be known as the nature of God, the nature of being yes, and so it is. So every time they call my child, they'll be calling the nature of God. Yes, when they say, amen, come here, amen. And so it is, come here, so it is, come here. You're saying yes to the divine and calling forth this wonderful nature. I love it. What a great name. When we honor as holy, when we honor something as complete, we're living mentally with the desire. And if we do this until it is complete, and complete absorption has taken place, we're going to manifest the desire of our heart. So what we want to do is revere in that holy name, revel in it, shall we say, rest in it. That holy name, the truth of that name, perfection, unity, oneness, that wonderful goodness, we rest in it, that yes that God is. We just rest in it, and we rest in it until it fills us up to completion. I think it's so important that every day we begin to flood our mind with the thoughts of success, flood our mind with the thoughts of the divinity of God, flood our mind with the yes, with the good, with the oneness, flood it and fill the mind up to the brim. Leave no room for any other thought. Just these wonderful, powerful un thoughts that will unfold the highest and best in our life. Because what we need to do is do this, focus on, understand this presence of God. As we learn more and more, as we endeavor to describe it, we experience it. And when we experience this, yes, this oneness, this perfection and work within our life, we know it firsthand and how important it is. Joseph Murphy tells of a story that there was a man after World War II who was without a country he could not prove his identity. After the war, his home was destroyed. All of his relatives and the members of his family, well, they were killed. He wanted a passport, but there was no way to prove that he was a citizen of a country. He was truly countryless. And it seemed hopeless, and he'd been refused so many times as he applied for this passport. But he said in his own simple way that he began to picture the consulate stamping his new passport. Every day he said, I just begin to visualize it. And I hold this to be true. The perfection of God, the oneness of God, the goodness of God, the very essence of God at work unfolding my highest and best. I hold it in mind and I see this is true. This is what it is. And I see night after night, the consulate stamping my passport and allowing me to be a citizen and to travel and to go home. After prayer, interestingly enough, and after claiming it, interestingly enough, after being so complete, so absorbed with this thought, people began to be drawn to him. People began to come out of the woodwork that were there to say, I'll testify. 
elsewhere of your origin and background. And lo and behold, what happened is his papers were issued. He got the passport. God's ways are often past our understanding or finding out or our real comprehension. But this we know as we describe God. God is perfect. God is one. God is unity. God is the all good. And we rest in this completely. I love this parable that really helps us in describing God and how we might experience then firsthand all that is God. It's from your sacred self written by Wayne Dyer. In a mother's womb, there were two babies. One asked the other, do you believe in life after delivery? Do you believe in life after delivery? Well, the other replied, well, why, of course, there has to be something after delivery. Maybe we're here to prepare ourselves. Maybe we're here in this womb to prepare ourselves for something later. Mm, nonsense, said the first baby. There's no life after delivery. What kind of life would that be? The second one said, well, I don't know. There might be more light than here. Maybe we'll walk with our legs. Maybe we'll eat with our mouths. Maybe we'll have other senses that we just can't understand right now. The first baby in the womb said, well, that's absurd. Walking is impossible. Eating with our mouths, that's ridiculous. The umbilical cord supplies everything that we need, but the umbilical cord is so short. Life after delivery is to be logically excluded. Ugh, the second insisted, well, I think there's something, and maybe it's something a little bit different than it is here. Maybe we don't need this physical umbilical cord anymore. Hmm, the first replied, I still think it's nonsense. And moreover, if there is life, then why has no one ever come back from there? Why don't we ever see someone here coming back from that life that you call out there? Delivery is the end of life. And the after delivery, there's nothing but darkness, silence, and oblivion. It takes us nowhere. Well, I don't know, said the second one. But certainly we will meet Mother, and she will take care of us. What? Mother? The first replied. You actually believe there's Mother? That's laughable. If Mother exists, well, where is she now? Well, the second said, well, she's all around us. We're surrounded by her. We are of her. It is in her that we live. Without her, this world, it wouldn't exist. The first one said, well, I don't see her. So it's not logical that she even exists. She doesn't exist for me. To which the second replied, sometimes when you're in silence and you focus and listen, you can perceive her presence and you can hear her loving voice. You can hear it calling down from above. Now, this beautiful parable describes, yes, there is God. And that God is best described as that presence of which we dwell in and survive in, that takes care of us, that is all around us, that we are surrounded by God and it is in God that we live and without God would this world not even exist as if God is this holy womb hallowed be thy name this womb that nurtures us perfect this womb that cares for us in unity and oneness this womb that provides the all good how do we describe God Sometimes it's difficult. But we find that these attributes then touch our life as we begin to unfold a greater understanding of all that this infinite, boundless, amazing essence offers for us. The prosperity, the goodness, the grace, the love, the completion, all wrapped up in a word called perfect, all there for us. And it's often in this silence that we experience the hallowed name, the holy name, the sacred character, the goodness that is God. The holy, the hallowed, the long, very loving, uh, divine character of the infinite possibilities is that which we are describing today 
and living within us and dwelling in us, through us, around us, and always for us. Yes, it may be difficult to describe God in God's entirety, but we've got a good start right here. A good start. Perfect. Perfect. Loving. Perfect in oneness. Perfect in a sense of unity. Perfect in all good and perfect in you. Amen. Thank you.